When I was uh, preparing for this a couple of weeks ago, I wrote down some questions I thought I would like to ask. But we answered them all already. Yes, you did. In fact, I wasn't going to come, but Jerry wouldn't give me my money back. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. So at this point... He would I... give it back to you now, even after you've come. <laughs> I guess so. So uh, now I'm pretty good at chilling out. I don't know if that's in the vortex or not. It is. It is. That's fine. And one, one of my questions is, here we have this where I can sit in our beautiful park and just enjoy that. And certainly in the past, if I think about trying to create something, I get nervous. So I've dropped all of that and left it to the manager. And I notice now when I'm chill, relaxed, some of those things, if I think about them, I don't want to do them. Or at least, well, for either I don't have an attraction to them or desire, or I actively don't want to do that. Generally, I, I'm pretty okay with this because I do trust that Source will provide whatever, and it has in the past. And then on the other side, there is I could actually start to create with whatever little desires I do have and approach it as practicing creating rather than being attached to the outcome. Well, all of that sounds like more effort than we are eager to encourage. In other words, when you, when some, pe some think, some worry that if I just chill, which means I, I sort of resist the urge to operate out of my fear by, or out of my effort. If I just chill and, and trust that the universal manager and that the law of attraction and that my vortex and that all of this imaginary stuff that Abraham's been swirling around will, will call me in and inspire me and, and fulfill my dreams. If I just chill and what if people fear, what if I, I never feel the urge? What if I just yeah. sit here on the bench? What if, what if I never feel the urge? And we say, it is our promise to you that you will feel the urge unless sitting on the bench then is a guilt trip. In other words, there are, there are some people who are deliberately resisting the urge to act because they've acted before and they didn't like it. They worked long hours and they worked for people they didn't like and they didn't make much money and they struggled and it was hard and they didn't sleep. So they don't want to do that again. And so they just want to sit on the bench and wait for inspiration. But then as they sit on the bench and then feel guilty about not doing something, now they're still not in the <laughs> vortex. So, right. so the rule of thumb that we're encouraging is as long as being on the bench is uplifting to you then it's a good place to be but what we've noticed for most of you is you can't sit on the bench very long in an attitude of chilling before you begin to get bored so what happens is go to the bench go to wherever you go for your contemplation get yourself in that deactivated of resistance place and it is our promise to you that inspiration will begin to flow and when you get an impulse about something follow it out follow it and see where it leads because it will lead it, the impulse will lead as far as you are vibrationally prepared to allow it to lead and sometimes you haven't prepared it to lead very far so it leads to something that feels like a dead end but that mm -hmm. was still it was still good to follow it in fact it was better than sitting on the bench because bench was beginning to feel guilty and boring and following the lead felt a little life-giving and if you keep following that process where you just keep following the impulse before you know it you'll begin to gain momentum and you'll and you'll drive past that bench and you'll remember what a respite mm -hmm. it was for you on your way to something that you're really eagerly involved in right so these so these impulses that I have go along with them and I will begin to learn the impulse will lead to another impulse will mm -hmm. lead to another and another and another haven't you noticed that mm -hmm. haven't you noticed that you'll you'll find an, an idea and the idea feels sort of interesting and as you ponder it more you, it gains a little momentum and before you know it something shows up in your experience Jerry and Esther 
all that they know about law of attraction and all that they've witnessed in terms of energy moving and wonderful manifestations still revel every single day several times in every day when something occurs that they know came in direct response to something they were thinking or some conversation they were having it is exhilarating last night they were watching Esther was watching um, house hunters and Jerry was uh, getting ready to sleep as best he could with Esther poking him and saying, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. And then the commercial came on with the little dancing elephant. And Esther loves the little dancing elephant. And they have the ga this game that they play every time the dancing elephant comes on where Esther says, I really want a little elephant just like that. And Jerry always says, it's a CGI elephant and Esther says no that elephant is real I can tell I can tell it is real and he is very talented and Jerry always says Esther the elephant is not real it's a CGI elephant and Esther always says no that elephant is real look how he's dancing there and look how he's dancing there I know that there is a game they're playing but it's a fun game for them boring for you fun for them <laughs> and it's a game they play at least once a day because the elephant appears at least once a day so so but this time Esther is more having more fun with Jerry about it than ever and she is saying to him I can feel that elephant making its way into my experience and when he comes I will share him with you <laughs> and then house hunters international came on and the people were looking at their house and an elephant walked through <laughs> their yard <laughs> And Esther said, see, is that elephant real? So what we are getting at here, anything you give your attention to, you become a cooperative component and the universe through the path of least resistance. Now, Esther's been playing that game with Jerry for weeks, ever since she first saw that dancing elephant. She plays it, she's having fun with it. So the universal manager did arrange an opportunity for her to be viewing where that could appear just in that sequence. You see what we're getting at? In other words, nothing is accidental. Nothing is coincidental. Now, there are many people who would listen to this story and they would say, well, that's just ridiculous. That isn't Esther's point of attraction. That is the programming of home and garden television. That, is, that, that had nothing to do with Esther's point of attraction. And we said, Esther rendezvousing with it and Jerry rendezvousing with it had everything to do with their point of attraction. Every creation, every co-creation is a rendezvous. And whatever is active in your vibration, the universal manager will make sure that it's there for you. So the reason that we tell you this story is not because Esther really wants an elephant or, and it's not because it's not because it is a necessarily uh, extraordinary uh, example of attracting something that you want. The reason that we told you that story is because it is indescribable. We cannot even find the words to express to you the thrill that Esther felt when the elephant showed up on the television screen in other words it was as good as that CGI elephant walking into her hotel room we are not kidding you in other words and so this is the thing that we want this is really the point that we want to make with all of this when you've taken the time to deliberately activate something in your vibration and then it appears in some form or fashion and you associate its appearance with your activation now you're off and running and there is literally nothing that you cannot accomplish Mm -hmm. Once you make that conscious connection that I thought about it and I thought about it from a place of pure alignment and now the universe is yielding to me mm -hmm. the evidence of that alignment. That is the best orchestration and conscious utilization of the universal manager that could ever be. Yeah, I think one thing that occurs to me here is in the past I have indeed resisted impulses because they always seem to get into... Um, confusion and conflict and or or because they lead you to a place that you've already concluded that you don't want to be in other words if I think about that I might end up and have been there done that don't want that but you have to understand that you're fresh and new your your vibrational shift has happened significantly enough that your point of attraction is unlike anything that has ever been before mm -hmm. so anticipating future experiences based upon past experience is really a silly thing to do 
We'll say that again. Anticipating future experiences based upon past experiences is a silly thing to do because your vibration isn't where it was in the past when you created that. It's shifted dramatically. And so everything is up for grabs. It's all open ended, it's all wonderful stuff that is potentially there for you, you see. Right. And then the converse of that is that. Well, is converse that... helpful? The converse yes. of that? Yes. Why? Tell us why. Uh, um, because Pros and cons, pluses and minuses. No. What's the converse of that? Is I can now anticipate that what's coming is likely to be pretty good, and I can work with it. Yes, because I am in a I am in a different vibrational stance, mm -hmm. and nothing, nothing that I have believed before need be. A factor in my current vibration if I stop repeating the stuff I've believed before that I know doesn't work for me mm -hmm. nothing I believe before has to be a factor. and that's what that's that's what the deactivation of thought is we've we've been playing with you about this for a long time I'm gonna stop thinking about that thing I'm thinking about and we say well mm -hmm. you're thinking about that thing you're not gonna think about while you're saying you're not gonna think about it you're still thinking about it so it's still active in your vibration and so we've been saying you can't there's no exclusion you can't you can't you can't really deactivate a thought what you can do is activate another but we want you to think about about in other words if I'm thinking this instead of this then I'm not thinking that so what I'm not thinking is inactive and what I am thinking is active we want you to begin thinking in terms of of leaning in the direction of what you want and this and the the consequence of that will be a deactivation mm -hmm. a, a no longer activation of things that have been holding you back right. and when there's and when there's nothing holding you back you don't want to sit on the bench in other words, the reason you want to sit on the bench is because you are not, you're trying to avoid doing stuff you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. But when you get yourself into this aligned place, you don't want to sit on the bench. Right. You want to get up, you want to move, you want to look, you want to see, you want to talk, you want to play, you want to flow, you want to walk, you want to be, you want to do, you want to interact, you want to create, you want to paint, you want to sing, you want to, you want to be alive, you want to move, you want to feel, you want to create, you want to express who you are, you want to uplift, you want to play, you want to romp, you want to be that little dancing elephant. You see, <laughs> not a care in the world, just move into the music and then all is well. Yes. Yes. I'll get a foot in this bench now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Further back. <laughs>